today we're going to be taking a look at Indiegogo and how you can start your own crowdfunding campaign. Before you go ahead and start asking for crowdfunding for your project, it's great to take a look at similar projects as yours. So for example, if you're about to create some innovative kind of power bank. It's good if you actually take a look at the different kind of power banks that are actually receiving a lot of crowdfunding so you can understand what kind of projects are getting the most attention, what are people actually interested in, what people will actually fund, what kind of project and what kind of description do they have? Do they have a lot of visuals? Do they have a very creative design? Do they have a very innovative idea? That will really just provide you a blueprint on what you should build your campaign on. So with that, let's get started. So on Indiegogo, you're going to sign up, you're going to put in your details, and I'll catch you guys in a minute. So once you've put in your details, you're going to click on start a campaign, and this is going to be your page. You're going to tell them if you're raising money for a individual project or if it's a business or a nonprofit. You're going to put in your location, your bank, and, you know, wherever you select your allocation will determine the currency your funds are going to be raised in, and then you're going to start your campaign. So you're going to put in the basic details of your campaign over here. So if you're creating innovative power bank, I'm just taking this as an example. You will obviously put in your actual details. Let's say our tagline is charge in one minute. And then you can upload any kind of image that you have for your campaign. I'm just creating this as a dummy campaign, so I'm not going to do that. You're going to put in your country, where you're from, where the location of your campaign will be. So wherever the product is being created or wherever it is being designed, and you're going to select your category. So there are a bunch of categories available on Indiegogo. You can select any one of them. If you're creating a power bank, then you're going to select energy and green tech because it might be related to eco-friendly energy consumption and there's this very large movement in clean energy so you could select that and then you're going to tell them what product stage you are at so if it is just a concept for now if you've created a prototype if it's in production or if it's even being shipped once you've done that you're going to put in your campaign duration a campaign can only last for up to two months so whatever goal you've set in terms of money you have to make it feasible enough and realistic enough that in two months you will actually be able to achieve it and the thing about starting a indiegogo campaign is you want to ask for as less money as possible so if you're starting a project and it costs if you're creating this high this clean energy power bank that charges your phone in a minute and you think the prototype will cost around five hundred dollars and you only have like two fifty dollars you're gonna make your indiegogo campaign not a five dollars but you're gonna try to make it around two fifty dollars because the more realistic the goal is the more amount of people will contribute to it so once you put in all those details, you're going to save and continue and that will launch your Indiegogo campaign. Obviously, you can review it. You can save it for now. It's going to save the campaign so you can put in your details slowly as you go. On the left side, you can see your campaign preview, your pre-launch page, the content that you're providing. So if you have a prototype and you have a video, you have images, you can put them over here. And then you have perks. So if someone has donated like $20 to your campaign, you can create a special perk. So people are more motivated to donate to your campaign. There's also items. Items enables you to give your uh, funders a small kind of gift or a small, you know, thank you note or a kind of just thank you to your crowd funders and will keep them motivated to donate to your campaign. So on number five, you have team. So if you have a campaign team, you can add their emails and their details as well if you're working in the form of a group. On the sixth, you have your fundings. So there are two types of funding that Indiegogo provides. First is the flexible funding. So if you have a goal of $500, you will just take your $250 and you'll move on and start your campaign or whatever kind of gadget you're creating. 
And the second is fixed funding, all or nothing. So what fixed funding means is that fixed funding is when you have a minimum amount required to start your project. So for example, if you only have an idea for now and you require $500 on the minimum to start acting on that idea, and you're not able to raise that, then Indiegogo will actually refund the money back to your crowd funders. And because your goal was not reached and the product cannot be created in like $250, you're just gonna have to let go of the idea for now or start another campaign with a better presentation. And Indiegogo does provide a note about taxes that the individual listed in the bank form may be liable for taxes if qualified. So if you are the one that is receiving the funding in your bank account and if you pay taxes and your income is, if your bank account is compliant to your country's taxation regulations, then you're going to probably have to pay tax on the amount that you receive. So after you take a look at your funding and however much money you require, so let's just keep the 500 and then you have your bank information. So you're going to put in your ABA number. That is your, if you live in the United States, that's your identification, your bank account identification. Then you're going to put in your account number and that will be the account on which Indiegogo will send your collected funds on. So make sure it's an active account and you actually use it and you keep track of it. So moving on to extras, you can add marketing images. If you have a Facebook page for your project or gadget, you can add that and you can add a bunch of other things. If you have a website, if you have some kind of analytics on Google, if you've created some Google tracking. So if you want to promote your Indiegogo campaign more, you can create Facebook ads will better help market your campaign. So someone scrolling on Facebook might find your product or gadget interesting and they're going to click on it and that might give you more people that are funding your campaign. Also, you can add more YouTube or videos related to your campaign. So if you have a bunch of videos created about your project, you can add them over here. Over here, we have settings. We can see in demand. In demand makes it easy for any successful campaigner to keep raising funds after their campaign ends. With in demand, you can accept funds even after your campaign has ended. And it grows your community and it helps you reach a new audience. And you're going to get even more exposure from the Indigo platform. And on-platform in-demand campaign raises on average of 123% more funds than their initial funding phase. So in-demand is has no time limit. It's going to be like an unlimited long-term kind of campaign. It's not really a campaign. It's just funds that you can accept after your initial campaign has ended once you've you know reached production maybe or even started shipping it just helps your product get a lot more attention than it might get if it just launched and you know the hype was over but this will help you keep your product at the front at the center of attention so this really helps in creating a kind of constant growth in your product and in your sales as well so you can make a lot more money than you invested initially so i'll see you guys in the next one and keep watching